Hello there guys and welcome to this tutorial on question two from English language paper two and this is what we commonly call the summary question where you're linking two texts together. Okay, so let's think about what this question is going to always ask you to do. It's always going to ask you to talk about source A and source B. So you know that you're going to be having to make links. Now this isn't marked as a comparison question, but you do need to make connections because look at the, the nature of the question you've been asked to do. So we've got a statement here, the effects of the weather on people in both sources are very different. Use details from both sources to write a summary of the different ways people are affected by the weather. So different ways affected by the weather. So we're summarising those two things. So obviously we're going to skim through the text to, in order to find our evidence. So you will have used some of your reading time um, and many of your teachers may have advised you to approach this exam doing numbers 1, 3, 2, 4 and I think that's a great idea because that means that question 2 you are making links and connections and you're doing the exact same sort of thing, you're taking that to develop it for question 4. So at this point what you're going to do is you're going to try and look for um, evidence of ways that people are affected and you're going to try and make some links and connections. Now I've heard different things from, from AQA on this but I'm telling my students to try and do two kind of P connections. The key skills here that we want to see in actual fact are not comparing, they're inference skills. So can you find evidence of how people are affected and infer certain things from it? So I've already been doing my reading time because otherwise that would make this tutorial ridiculously long. And so what I wanted to do is focus on um, the way that people were affected. So obviously in Source A, um, which is this extract about Everest, about the death zone, one of the things that I immediately latched onto as a reader is the fact that it's very dangerous for people. You know, the writer talks about it's as bad as it was possible to do. The mightiest man in the world had disappeared from view. It was far more dangerous. And then, you know, the, 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 the storm itself is uh, depicted as being very, very dangerous for the men. Um, a night from hell. Uh, and, and images there about people fighting for their lives. Now, in the second source, it's very different, isn't it? It's about the, how attractive the snow is, how beautiful it is, how fun it is. So that's where I'm going to start with one of my key differences. I'm going to focus on that in source A, it's very dangerous and frightening, and in source B, it's much more attractive. So how do we then draw some of those ideas together? Well, I'm going to go straight into uh, looking at source A, and it makes sense to do that. Um, <clears throat> There's no, I mean, you can do them either way you want, but I'm going to just appro approach it from source A. So I want to go straight in with this idea of the way that people have been affected. So I'm going to start with, in source A, people's experience of the snow. I need a good word to sort of sum up what that experience is like. So rather than just say negative or positive, which is really generic and vague, I want to be a bit more precise. You know, being precise is key here. So I'll say people's experience of the snow is terrifying. Okay, so it is, so we, we need to make sure we don't end up making this a language question. Um, but let's sort of, why is it terrifying? So the storm on Everest is described as being as bad as it was possible to be and uh, let's think about that and the men experienced a night from hell. So I'm all the time sort of looking back and forth from my extract. Now I know some of your teachers may not advise you to use highlighters but for me it works well. I think it's about finding what, uh, what's right for you. So what have I got here? I've made a point and I've got some evidence in source here. People's experience of the storm is terrifying. The storm in Everest is described as being as bad as it was possible to be and the men experienced a night from hell. Um, so what can we infer from that, if it was as bad as it was possible to be, or if it was a night from hell? So this highlights 
The, what does this highlight about it if it was bad as it was possible to be? Well, this highlights to me that the men were in extreme danger. In fact, they were uh, at risk of death. So this highlights the, um, the sense that the men were um, in an incredibly dangerous, even fatal, even fatal situation. Um, so what else, what else might you tell me, because we've got this second quote, A Night from Hell, um, the fact that it was hellish makes us think, makes us think that the people were in what kind of a situation? A hellish situation. We're in a terrible, um, a terrible uh, environment, and that the weather was bringing them close to death. So I'm going to go with that. So I haven't explicitly focused um, on language in the same way, but I am thinking about the way that it's different. Um, so what do I need to do now? I need to obviously make my comparison to text two. So um, we know from uh, source B, don't we, that we're looking at, oops, bear with me. Um, we're looking at the, um, the, the diary entry here about London in the snow and we know that it was nothing could be more beautiful and it was exquisite so we need to make our connection now so how, I think however is a really good one to show to signpost a difference to the examiner however in source B the weather is, and don't just say the weather is affects people differently because that's obvious um, and it doesn't actually make a, any kind of precise link. So rather than, you know, and it, and it says that in the question, you don't need to repeat that for the examiner. However, in source B, the weather is far less dangerous and in fact it brings people real pleasure. Um, we are told that nothing could be more beautiful. So what does that evoke to me? Nothing could be more beautiful which shows that the weather was a thing of beauty for people. What might I also say? What might other? Nothing could be more beautiful. It shows that people found the snow to be almost magical. It actually improved London, whereas the storm in Sauce made things much worse. So you can see from what I've been doing there, I haven't started talking about adjectives and verbs. I'm going to leave all of that stuff for question three. Now, um, I've sort of been, I've done one kind of connected P point here, and that's taken me, you know, that full one side in the booklet. That's why I don't think you are going to be able to do three points in the time you've got. So you'd be looking to spend somewhere in the realm of 10, 12 minutes writing up your ideas to this. So I, I really don't believe that, you know, my hand's hurting, so I don't believe that anyone could be writing um, three of these points, so I would advise for two. So 
what are we needing to do with this? We need to find some links and connections. And at the top end, we'll be saying, you know, making this this sort of link here, the weather's far less dangerous, and here it's, a, it, it's improved London, whereas the storm in Sausay has made that place, that environment much worse. I've used evidence, and I've, and I've inferred from that evidence. I've explained and, and thought about what that could really mean in terms of those different ways that people are affected. Now, just um, for this, you know, for, to keep this tutorial short, I won't go on and do an additional point, but I think that were I going to, what I'd focus on now here is, look at this, more than 30 climbers were fighting for their lives. You know, what can we infer from that? Well, that it is deadly, that this is a life and death situation. And I might then make the connection to men were scraping and shoveling the footways. Um, which certainly doesn't sound like their lives were put at risk, does it? People have been affected in a very everyday kind of way. They've not been, um, they've not sort of been, uh, they're not at risk of dying in the same way that they are in Sauce. So that would be the next point that I would, were I going to write this full answer, that I would go on to talk about. What you could do now if you've got your, <coughs> if you've got a copy of the source, you could yourself practice doing that. Or you could, um, you know, you could get any two non-fiction ones and, and, and make your own question quite easily with this. Okay, so just remember on this, try and aim to do two, because the um, in the mark scheme, if you're going to get five, six marks, certainly seven or eight, you've got to look at differences. Okay, that plural differences. Um, so you've got to have done it more than once. But I, I really would recommend not attempting three. So key is inference, making some differences and connections between the texts, uh, and that's your question three.